Okay, can everybody see recording? Did it make a sound for everybody? Okay, great. Um, cool. So um, are there any questions before we start this round? Okay, timekeeping will be done in chat. I will give you um, like timestamps at one minute, seven minutes and eight minutes. Um, and if there are no dilemmas, I would like to invite the first speaker of the proposition to open the debate here, here. All right, so you can all hear me. All right, so everyone in Team Brazil would prefer not to get a verbal POI, so POI is either in the chat or visually, please. So my pronouns are he, him, and I'll start in three, two, one. A couple of things in my speech. First, some definitions and characterization, and then why we get better social relations in our side of the house. First of all, defining family, we're not talking only about nuclear family. We're talking about grandparents, uncles, cousins, husbands and wives, and not also not necessary biological bonds. For example, a step parent is part of your family as well. So what is the comparative of having this debate? What the prop Trafacho looks like people maintaining closer relations to their family as they're the dominant un unit of organization in society, so they spend more time together, strengthen even more their bonds and their relationships stronger, so people depend and think more about their family instead of other institutions, and the family's organization that people trust more in outside of the house. However, in your side of the house, people get away from their family to look for a group that represents them and groups that have social common traits. They prioritize other groups such as friends, work, church, political parties, etc. We believe that the most important metric is in which world we have better relations for individuals that's especially important in a modern world in which relations are even times weaker. So why do we actually get some stronger bonds on our side of the house? First of all, some framing. People live through a lot of challenges in their life, so they need some strong support system and strong social relations. They go through diseases, financial struggles, everyday stress. They need help to overcome all those issues and keep going with their lives. Therefore, strong relationships are especially necessary especially necessary in the status quo. So what are the incentives that families groups have in other side of the house? First of all, quick disclaimer, rational incentives aren't the ones that lead families. Families have more incentive to take care of their members and not abandon them. Family members take care of each other because they have biological and social bonds towards them that are stronger than other common bonds. They have, exp they have been together for a long time and all of that, but they trust people and they take care of people not because of how they how fun they are, how interesting they are, or how useful they are, but just for the fact that they are your kids, your parents, or anything like that. For example, when you're extremely sick, having a devastating disease, we believe that the ones that are actually going to help them in all instances are your family. Consideration for family members happens because of who they are. Parents don't love their kids because they're useful or funny or anything. They love them because they are their kids, regardless of all these aspects. That is why, for example, parents give up their dreams to take care of their kids if they have some sort of disease for deficiency or anything like that. Because parents love their kids for things that are more than their how useful they can be for them. Families also have incentives to accept their members. Even if you, they will behave differently from expected from your family, they are more they're more incentivized, more likely to accept what you're doing, who you are, than in the comparative of other social groups. Because you have the family, the, your, your family members only have you as part of your family. Therefore, there are high incentives for forgiveness in the other in the other friendships, for example. And I'll explain that in a minute. That is why if you go outside of prison, for example, the only people you see coming in and out are mothers, are parents in general. You're not seeing friends for a simple reason that has to do with how these social groups work and how they are different from families. Organization of social groups that are the dominant in our side of the house is based on factors that change over time. People's beliefs, personality, behavior, utility, and etc. Who these people actually are who, in the fact that they might change and these things might change doesn't really matter. These groups are built around things in common, and if those things in common change and don't exist anymore, the relations between these groups don't exist. There's a huge standardization of behaviors in such groups in your side of the house. What happens is that people they need to maintain a specific pattern in order to belong to these groups and be accepted. Members of these groups don't really care about who these people really are. They have no will for quite little and don't have any incentives to actually protect you. You only care for People only care about you from the time they see that you have behaviors that are common, the time that you have 
traits common that the, are the traits that base the relations of social groups you know in your side of the house what happens is that family are basing things that are more definitive your kids are your kids no matter what your parents are your parents no matter what but in your side of the house social relations between friends work groups for example are change so P-O-I? before moving on poi no verbal pois but i'll take that oh i'm so sorry i forgot um surely under the, our side of the house um under the status quo despite this decline of the traditional family relationships this still this un, lo, if this love is unconditional between family members surely this is something that has con, like declined under your side of the house like this can exist without um in like people seeking more individualism all right all right i got that so what happens is yes we get these love in our side of the house however in your side of the house people are more dependent of other relationships that are weaker we're talking about people who spend more of their time and be more emotionally dependent of people that don't really care about them however in our side of the house people are actually closer to their families into this moment they are more definitive than in the comparative what happens is how individuals behave in ops world in ops world people look like look for a group to socialize and feel welcomed etc this is bad for individuals because they have to look for this specific bond that makes them together individuals often have to change themselves to be accepted if the group is is building around something like like in a sort soccer team for example the people can't just stop liking this or stop or changing themselves and not being that interested in this anymore because they are breaking the bond that was actually created and the thing that bases this relation in your side of the house on our side of the house people don't need to change themselves to feel accepted family is only one and you this family can't be changed so what happens is that no matter if you move to another place if you don't, don't like things you used to like family is a more solid institution than any other institution that is dominant in your side of the house and family is the only place where people place where people are more free to change and the people will keep loving you because the reason they love you is not what you like not what you're inter interested in but actually who you are they're actually biological incentives in our side of the house but even if the family doesn't like you way you act or you, what you identify with if we have a we still get a benefit compared to your world. For example, families are able to combine different people with different points of view and backgrounds. So even if you have a homophobic father, for example, you can still be extremely close to your brother, your uncle, or great father, or something like that. And these people actually care about you no matter what. What happens is that older other social groups are more willing to abandon you if you're different compared to if you're different than what they believe compared to families because they actually have a emotional closer emotional bond with you. Even in a world scenario where worst scenario the families are horrible they don't have anyone that loves them in this scenario even in a worst scenario they would need to get closer to other groups but it'll still be dependent of what these groups believe so they'll still be oppressed and still need to be that same person said they'll be abandoned on their side of the house families Family is not people's main social group. It leads to people being closer to groups in which relations between people are weaker and their social relations are worse. If relations with such groups collapse, they will be worse off because they are de more dependent of these relations. In our role, people have stronger relation with their family and they would have a safe haven, a place that can feel good, etc. So in your side of the house, people are more dependent from these groups where social relations are weaker. However, in our side of the house, people base their lives on relationships that are stronger, which means the family so practical benefits in our side of the house people have better support system for huge changes in their life if they need money food psychological support their family will be there for you for them more than these other groups they will also have a better support system for everyday things so someone that actually cares about these people someone that actually cares about who they are and their well-being compared to your side of the house in your side of the house relations are based on some common traits these common traits change and people don't have an incentive to care for you actually care about you incredibly proud to propose i thank the speaker for that fine speech and if everybody is ready i would like to invite the first opposition speaker okay cool thank you here here Today, we don't refute the importance of family regarding a person's growth, but we do believe that the decisions of individuals should not be dependent on family. Having seen the benefits of individualism brought to oneself and women, we don't regret the decline of family as the dominant unit of organization in the society. Today, we'll prove to you that A, on our side, we would uh, 
uh, individuals will be better off, especially for uh, women. And secondly, we tell you that um, uh, having having other relationships actually, I mean, um, on our side of the house, we would re improve the relationship, relationships within the family. And today I'll brought to the uh, debate of, oh, I'll, brought to argue, I'll bring two arguments to the, to the debate. First, I'll talk about self-identity. And secondly, I'll talk about how it improves the relationships within a family. And my partner will be expanding on um, how it improves the status of women. But before I start my substantive, I'd like to do some rebuttals of what the previous speaker have said. So first of all, um, at the very beginning of their speech, they said that the whole motion uh, is for individuals to look for a group, as to look for like which relationship is better for individual, whether family or uh, friends. However, we believe that they have misunderstood the motion. We don't see like why finding a relationship is necessarily the only aim of having family as the dominant unit of organization within the society. We see that they have fall into the fallacy of false dichotomy. We believe that um, it's just not either you have a relationship with family or then you have a relationship with your friends. We don't see this as the purpose of this motion. So therefore, we don't understand why do they uh, put on this burden of proof on themselves. But then secondly, there's a uh, first proposition spent whole of like the like most of his most of his speech talking about like how um, because that family uh, has unconditional love and they would take care of each other, then they would get a better relationship for the family, which is the most important thing. However, we do, it's just very heartwarming to see that, oh, a family is actually so caring for each other. And we do believe that um, family uh, does, a family relationship for an individual is very important. But we don't see why having, not having family as a dominant unit of organization in the society means that you don't get a good relationship with your, with your parents, right? We tell that, actually, you can also get this in our, on our right. side. And exactly, no, no, thank you. I'll be, I'll be uh, telling you, I'll be, I'll be telling you in my second point how the relationship with the family can also be improved under our side when even when uh, family is not the dominant unit uh, in this uh, of organization in the society. Now back to um, my own substantive on first self identity. So first of all, um, what does their world look like? In the past, we tell that there are these traditional thoughts that family comes first in all situations because there's no family, then there's no uh, them and. But what does it mean for uh, individuals? We tell three things. First, all people mean all people will feel that they have responsibility and obligations to their family. For example, if your family runs an old business, then it is your responsibility to continue their business. Secondly, we tell that it also means that it is basic for you to obey your family. It is basic for you to follow your parents' hopes and plans for your future, and you're because you're born to make your family proud. And we tell that this idea is still perpetuating in some traditional Asian countries. For example, parents are overly exerting their control over children, wanting them to succeed. And uh, sometimes where the definition of succeeding is to be wealthy or a wealthy or, or married to a wealthy counterpart. And then thirdly, we tell that having family as a dominant unit also means that your identity is directly linked to your family. In this society, you identify yourself as part of the family instead of an individual. So what are the impacts of this? So we see that, uh, we see this as incredibly harmful because of three reasons. First, you get less self-actualization because time is limited, right? If you spend too much time doing things your family wants for you, then there's You're an right. opportunity cost for other self-explorations. I'll get that later. It also means that you have less time to explore your interests your, and your preferred career. And secondly, we tell you this is harmful because you get less maturity. Because then you have serving your family uh, has been your main purpose in your whole life you can't find your special purpose in life you can't have your own directions in life and because you're so because a family is a dominant unit within the society and you have to work for a family and you lost your position within the society and thirdly we tell that also harms self-identity because when everyone's identity is linked with their family there will be stigmas or overgeneralization around the family but what if a person's opinion do not align with that of the family? What would happen? For example, what if like a, a kid is gay or lesbian, but then uh, the traditional Christian family um, do not accept that? Do, they, do she need to uh, change her identity and change her uh, sexual uh, belief into what um, her family wants for her? We simply don't believe that it's uh, healthy for the individual. So therefore, uh, we don't believe that um, having family as a dominant unit as, uh, as, as helpful for an individual. But on the other hand, whereas on our side, we tell that we prefer the status quo, where I respect my family and I'm grateful for them bringing me up and having 
to build this intimate relationship with them. However, I do not connect my identity with them. I do not think what they believe is what, what I must believe in. I have the freedom of religion. I'm free from influence of my family over important decisions. I am myself. I have individualism. And we think that's the most important thing for an individual. But before I, before I start on, on to my second substantive, I would like to take your point. Family relations are not a relation of control of individuals. People that have the autonomy to decide if they want or they want not, don't want to do. And actually, in family, they have more space to change into what they want. We do understand the nuance of your uh, characterization of a family. However, we tell that under the current under this motion, uh, having family as a dominant unit of organization under society, it means that it means that family is the most important thing, right? Even if the family is not exerting control over you, it's also, it also means that you believe you have this obligation for the family, and you won't want to make your family feel disappointed, right? So therefore, uh, no matter from a uh, family's point of view or from individuals' point of view, we see that it's very likely that individuals will fall um, what the family's directions are. So therefore, I would guess let individualism, as I've explained. Now on to my second point on how uh, it improves the relationship within the family. How would this happen? As I've explained to you, family has been a primary form of socialization for individuals. We see that um, in day-to-day -day lives in the household. So individuals are more likely to do uh, what their family pushes them to do. So this restricts individual, individual freedom, as I've explained. So therefore, it can cause disputes. On the other hand, on our side, we have, when we have more space, we have less family uh, pressure. So therefore, it is more beneficial for uh, relationships within a family because it allows individuals to blossom. And when the parents see their kids actually have the ability have the ability to flourish on their own it's just likely that they're gonna be happy it's likely that relationship is gonna um, be better because there are less disputes within the family and and what are the impacts of this we tell that um for the family it says there will be less pressure from the parents and older members of the family because we therefore we allow the society to evolve to become more diverse and we tell that family as results form stronger bonds with one another because the younger generations are happier and healthier which satisfies the traditional norms of families which are to ensure the protection of children and also we tell that for a society um we'll get a more harmonious society because that um, because now the relationships within the family is better, so therefore, <clears throat> so therefore, uh, uh, everyone is happier on our side of the house. So, in conclusion, we believe that the society, also in inclusion, we believe that the society requires both collectivism and individualism. So, we just don't agree with this dominant culture of family that uh, doesn't make the balance of collectivism and individualism um, on their side. So, therefore, I'm incredibly proud to oppose. Thank you. I thank the speaker for that fine speech. Um, I will be back in a second. I just need to close my door because my roommate came home and uh, I don't want to have background noise. Uh, but uh, in meanwhile, everybody collect your notes. I need 20 seconds. Cool. Um, if everybody's ready, then I would like to invite the second prop speaker here, here. Okay, great. I'm going to start my speech in a few seconds. All right, just going to put my timer on here. All right, so I'm going to start my speech in three, two, one. Better note. The opposition team never actually engage with their status quo and with their counterfactual. They never explain how they deal with the problems that we have to deal with in the status quo. This means that they never actually explain how um, individualism is something that is not a bad or how not being able to connect, having strong relationships is something that is not bad in their side of the house. They need to engage with their status quo and be comparative about why they prefer to have a world that does not care about relationships rather than a world that has, has more, more stronger uh, like connections with people that they are close to because of family. But now in, answer some questions during my speech and again, my POIs on the chat. So first of all, why prioritizing other groups is bad, right? It's bad. So how do we believe that such values work in their side of the house? Tana, look, we're talking about groups that do not have like the same idea of what is important as family. This means that in their side of the house, what is most value is the idea of how I can like be, um, 
how can I like aggregate something to the group? How do I compare myself to the group? Look, my my friend, my group of friends is not because we're like love each other um, unconditionally, but it's because we share the same values or because we share the same opinions right now. This means that uh, my friend of groups is not actually someone that would be for with me for the whole, the whole time of my life, but actually someone that just agrees with my idea right now. So this means that we understand that such relationships are not as strong because they depend on actions, they depend on beliefs, and then depend on how you act inside a group to be as accepted. In the comparative, we told you that we believe that a family does not have this because of the analysis that my first speaker gave you. This means that we understand that a family values no matter what, who you are. So this means that you are better able to be yourself when you value a family, when you, when you value your family because you are able to develop your beliefs, you are able to develop your um, passions, you are like who you choose to be without having the fear of not being accepted into a group. When you have family as your primarily uh, way to develop yourself, you're more able to be who you actually are because you do not have to follow social standards to achieve this. But most important, why is this bond stronger in our side of the house and why are they more likely to accept their, themselves? As I already told you, we believe that a family, no matter if my, my, my mother do not want me to, for example, my mother wants me to be a doctor, even though I'm not going to pursue medicine in the future, it still she sees me as her daughter or someone that she cares about. Maybe I don't like you know don't agree with my sister about every political opinion, but still she's my sister who cares who cares about me, who respects me, and who who will be thinking about me and how I am during her entire life. This means that you do not have like conditional times to be loved. We do not have conditional times to be accepted. We can just be ourselves because my family will, will care for me and my family will take care of me but what this status quo looks like panel so where i already told you that this status quo do not value their family and do not see family as the most important thing this means that they believe that rather than being able to spend a good sunday morning with my family have a good like christmas night it's better for me to have momentaneous moments of connections with people who I do not have stronger bonds with so this means that prioritizing being accepted to like a group that likes to dress like like something rather than being able to have stronger connections with my family and being able to develop my who I believe I am. This means that in their side of the house, people are less likely to be themselves as a whole. But what does it mean that having your family as priority? Do you value what family values at most? This means that we understand what family values values at most, like respect, value being there for each other, value being there, very value, value being empathetic, and value giving back to the community. This means that you grow up with Watching your par parents dedicating most of their time to yourself when you're a chip, when, when, when you're a kid. They lose time to take care of you rather than to be working or to having fun. This means that you grow up learning that as a people, as an individual, you have to do more for others than just use people for your advantage. Because you see your grandmother leaving her town to just take care of you on like the weekends, or you see your brother sleeping late at night because you need help with your math exercise. This means that in your side of the house, side of the house you see people as some someone who need help for their, their life not only for momentary periods but most important people want to have a family panel no, look, everybody wants to be able to, uh, uh, like, uh, out of the blue, have someone asking you, how are you? Not not regard, not depending on any fact. This means that everybody wants to be able to, wants, uh, able to on the Christmas night, you having a fine dinner with your family, being able to go sometimes to, like, parties with your family, have someone next to you all of the time. The comparative here is that in their side of the house, people still want to have families. The difference is that they're not able to achieve this because they do not have strong connections. It's not a it's not enough for them to say that, oh, not valuing your family does not lead to worse family relation, as they already said. We do not believe that is actually true. When you do not put your family as a priority, it leads to you getting away from them, it leads to you getting, uh, 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 like not going to their houses anymore, not, not talking, not speaking to them anymore. This means that you do not create important bonds, and most important, they are not your priority. So if you have a party to go, or if you have like your mom, your mom's birthday, you're going to choose to go to the party rather than celebrate your mom's life. So this means that in the rest of the house, they do not have strong bonds, so they, they can't claim this. But most important, when they see the parents are controlling, I have to respond 
analysis for that. The first, it's not necessarily true because family not always will buy you to be someone who you're not. Family is likely to accept who you are, especially when we talk about this motion that we're not like debating this motion in the past, but actually how we, we believe that we should have prioritized best um, like this dominance of family in, in right now. So this means that we believe that family still have an evolution of how cultural meanings, uh, culture means matter for her. So we're talking about families that can be diverse right now and families that can care about diverse opinions, diverse um, decisions and diverse uh, individuals. So this means that we understand that the parents are going to accept you and they're going to not be controlling about who you are. But even though, even if they are, we still believe that this is not li likely to be like something, um, something that we like will uh, go on for a long, long time. This means that my mother would be probably sad that I'm not going to be a doctor for a couple of weeks, but later she'll, she'll realize that, okay, it's something, maybe it's not that bad because my daughter is happier now that she can choose to be like a debater, for example. So this means that family, because they care about, about you, are likely to accept your decisions because they see how important this is for you. In comparison, um, people for, uh, for other groups do not care about this. But before engaging more, up your life. So do you believe then that people should make compromise, have to make compromises for the, this benefit of the family do organization being dominant? For example, not taking a job, but to, in order to be closer to the family, to in order to like be present to like provide in these family values. So like, okay, 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 okay. I'm not saying this. I'm saying that if people believe, if, if people believe that this is the most important thing, okay, fine, they should do this because it makes them happier. Okay, I don't have, I do not have a problem with this. But look, we're talking about people who care best about their values and about their family. This does not mean like uh, priving themselves of doing what they want to do, but just just believing that they should do more than just caring about their, themselves in this world, but be engaging better about uh, opinions and how we have the diverse opinions, better diverse opinions in their side of the house as they claimed. This is not actually true because when you do not, because in their side of the house, you actually search for people with the same interests as you and you get, you're likely to get like, very close to an uh, idea, it's all to the same idea. This means you're all are like only going to follow people, the same people in on social media, or only going to believe the same ideas because you're likely to going to just insert yourself in groups that think the same way as you. The comparison here is that in families, people actually have different opinions, different minds, and have different relationships about the world. So this means you have more diversity in our side of the house. So proud to propose. I thank the speaker for that fine speech, and I would like to remind all of the debaters that the time you have for asking POIs is 15 seconds. Please give that to the respect to your opponents um, to adhere to that. Uh, but with that, if everybody is ready, I would like to invite the second uh, opposition speaker. Here, here. Hi, sorry, just need to set up my timer. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Also, um, hi, my pronouns are she, her, and please could you um please could you announce your POIs verbally as I will not be keeping an eye on the chat. Okay. Starting in three, two, so sorry. Starting in three. I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay. Starting in three, two, one. As opposition, we stand for a world where individuals have the power to stand as just that. Individuals who are free to self-actualize and pursue their own goals and dreams outside the expectation of the rest of their family unit. We say that Proposition's world undoubtedly impedes upon this, particularly for stakeholders who they have failed to address in the debate, such as women. So in my speech, this is what I'm going to just, out I am going to primarily outline. I'm going to address how the status of women is better off on our side of the house compared to what Proposition's world look like so far in the debate. However, I would like to begin my speech with some rebuttal. So we've had some interesting discourse so far from Proposition. They've talked about how um, they seem to frame this debate in the point about um, whether or not family is something that is important or whether or not family is something that is needed. Um, they've talked about how without family, people fail um, 
to like find this mean like meaningful existence in society because the friendships that they have are only conditional because they're based on um the action and beliefs of the group however we believe that this characterization of the debate is not something that is actually quite true we don't think this is a debate about whether or not family is a good thing essentially which is something they have failed to recognize this is a debate about whether we think family should be the dominant organization in society i.e wh whether everything that your your actions in society, your intentions, um, your even individual like your identity should be tied primarily to your family. This is what we believe is meant by dominant. Um, therefore, um, bring back to that point about how they believe then that um, it is impossible. Um, because of this idea of friendship being conditional and contending with the concept of family. Um, we don't see how on our side of the house family and friendships are something that should a, a family member should have to choose from or prioritize on our side of the house we it's much more realistic that um we address their main points for a battle about um individuals not being able to like get different opinions um from like groups and friendships under our side of the house we think because of how um our side of the house accommodates for um an individual to pursue um, their identity through forging these friendships with individuals. We believe the family as a whole is um, going to be something that is more greatly like um, enriched and diversified in opinion because of this interaction that they have from different friendship groups and individuals. Therefore, we fail to see how um, we do not allow um, for this like different this different like formulation of opinions and identity is something that stands um on their side of the house also they talked about how um the importance of the community and they talked about how um lack of like social um like how people learn um from the family uh the expectations of the community and social standards um because they no longer have this traditional setup of family You're However, right. this is something no thank you this is something that leads quite nicely into my main debate because we believe it is this traditional setup um indeed um uh, that promote um within the family that um eight like serve to restrain the actions of the individual within itself um, and which is actually what I'm going to be talking about now about the role of women. So therefore, in conclusion, what have we gathered so far from opposition stance in the debate? We believe that their point about um, we don't see how like a positive family familial relationship can occur alongside pursuing like individuality and stuff, because we don't think this is a debate about whether or not family is important. We think it's about whether family should be centric to your life. Now, main, now on to my main uh, points. In the past, because of family being a dominant unit, a dominant unit of organization, for, um, we believe that traditional gender roles were more oftenly more often imposed. For example, because of how historically um, it was examined how males and females um, were biologically composed. Historically, this was something that led um, because of the say like the prioritization of safety and development to the children it led to the implementation of these more generic gender roles for example men being expected to work women being expected to stay at home with the children to provide we believe that um is it it was expected then to, for women to spend a lot of time catering to the needs right. of the family. No, thank you. Because it was rare to see women, um, and it's actually very rare to see women in the workplace, um, because if they were seen in the workplace, it was seen that they were not pushing this characterization of safety and um, of their children, because instead of staying at home to fulfill this role of protection, um, they are instead in work, and therefore they are neglecting the needs of children in the family. Therefore, overall, with this context of women being, like this being, family being the dominant role stakeholder in society um, women were seen as having a significantly lower status in society and um, because of this stigmatization stigmatization in praise this was incredibly detrimental to the well-being of women and they were unable to pursue their self indiv individuality and go into the workplace uh, going into the workplace uh, exploring more social time outside of the family because they were not complying with this um expectation of women i'll take your poi now External social groups with influence exist in both worlds. Families matter because people care more about you compared to other groups. Why would people only talk about okay. you because you like something in commas would you. actually care? Thank you for your PI. Yeah, we don't see how this is something that is exclusive under your side of the house. Um, because under your side of the house, 
on our side of the house, we are allowing for um, people not only to be out with their family, to be to like be exist with as a part of a family. We're allowing for them better to explore their roles as an individual. So on our side of the house, these two uh, things coincide. I don't understand your point exactly then. So um, on prop side of the house, this treatment of women, women is quite likely to continue because under their model as a tradition of a traditional family, um, women are expected to continue to remain close to the family in this more traditional manner because they're expected then to, as Prop suggested, sacrifice their time and spend time with um, their, spend time with their family and like cater to the needs of the people. And we believe then that um, even if we consider the possibility that under, oh, sorry. Okay. And even, um, we believe that unlike it's unlikely then under their side of the house that women can be close and still work for most of the time if they're pushing this thing for women to be um, a more like have more dominant role because under the state um, and under the status so then under their side of the house women are more expected to stay at home and work there for the most of the time whilst on, under our side of the house on, on the status quo women can still be close and work with their family but their whole life and the whole process um, it's not tied to this expectation of being centric to the family. Um, therefore, on our side of the house, we provide better opportunity for women to explore um, this individualism and explore their lives outside of this maternal norm. Because A, if they are married, they do not have this stigmatization, stigmatization of them anymore um, under our side of the house because they no longer need to spend all this time at home with their family because they won't be seen as not being dedicated to their family because we're not enshrining this dominance um, and sacrificing your individuality to the family. We believe that women deserve a life to explore uh, for themselves and therefore they're able to go out into the workplace and find the individuality, which is going to be as we proved better for the family as a whole um, because they can come back and formulate their individual, their different individual opinions and they can contribute um, to um, providing these different like opinions and stuff in the family and they'll be better members of society as a whole because of that and if people or women are not married they are not being pressurized into forming of uh, this family so therefore we believe this is important so therefore in con conclusion our side has um it better supports the rights of women because we are no longer expecting them to conform to this norm of caring and catering for the family which is why i urge you to oppose I thank the speaker for that fine speech, and I would like to invite the third proposition speaker. Here, here. Hi, can everyone hear me well? Give me just 10 seconds to set my timer. Um, I'll be preferring my POIs in the chat. Great, I'll be starting my speech in three, two, one. Panel, on both sides of the house, humans have biological and emotional tendencies to connect with other people. That's important because they go through a lot of struggles that they can't solve alone. So they search for other people to alleviate that pain. So the most important matter in this debate is in which role do we get better relationships and decisions lives? Two themes in my speech. Firstly, on family relationships, and second of all, on self-identity and relationships. Just before moving on to these clashes, let me just get a strategic clarification out of the debate because their argument on women is very uncomparative and very symmetric because they say that uh, they say about women being tied about be, being tied to become housewives because they identify with the family values and that's what what makes them close closing these relationships. But we don't think that's not that's not really intrinsic to the motion, but to the patriarchal values of male superiority. So in their side of the house, if that's not through family structures, we believe that they will still uh, be an advantage through other social structures, such as um, such as workplace or or other social groups that also have these patriarchal values, and they, they will still be um, a lot of press in these groups. Okay, moving on to my first slash regarding family ties. They say here that if you take away all the pressure and self-identification with your family, now 
uh, you have better relationship with your family. That's untrue because you're going to identify with something either way. That's and that's likely to be a community or, or social groups apart from your family because people have social tendencies to look for places where they feel understood. So on their side of the house, people will deprioritize their families. So they will have worse relationships because they'll have less connections and less incentives, for example, to look for each other, for example, in times of need. So I don't trust my family anymore to have, for example, when I'm feeling uh, ill or when I'm passing through an economic struggle. Now I'll go through another social group or for my friends or, work, or workplace individuals or something like that. And on the comparative, our gains were important because on our side of the house, at least we identify with the social structure that's stronger and more likely to support you through struggles and hard times in life. Before moving on, I have PY. Yeah, surely because we're pushing for more dominant, um, like a more dominant presence in society. And because of these existing biases in society, women are more likely to be susceptible to um, this like misogyny because of the existing biases. So therefore they're going to be spending more time at home under your motion because of how they're- I see, I see your point. You say that family structures are inherently tied to the patriarchal structures in society, but we say that's not actually true because people are, are biased anyway. So even in your side of the house, if these women don't get self-identified with their families, they will be self-identified with other social groups and the social groups will also have biases and therefore they will still suffer from misogyny and from on your side of the house, so that's actually symmetric. Okay, moving on then to my second clash about self-identification and relationships. They say two things here. Firstly, that identifying with your family makes you live your life for them, so all, their, all of your decisions and um, dreams are going to be tied to your family wishes. And second of all, that th this makes you take better this. Um, Taking yourself off this structure makes you take better decisions, especially for women, which I've already said this is unclear and that's totally symmetric. But a few responses. Firstly, that's a very little nuance. That's a very little nuanced vision as to how families work. It's not because I need my family that I'll shape all of my actions according to their wants. Okay, they will affect my decisions. But if there's something that re that's really important for me, I'll do it anyway, even in disclosure of my family. So if I'm LGBT uh, person, even then, I even if my father or my mother, they don't agree with that decision, I can still do that in my free time because I'm still an individual that can take individual decisions apart from my family. But having this identity is what makes me, for example, um, Stronger, for example, when I'm going through a struggle or going through identity crisis, I can go to them and I can talk to them. And we've already shown incentives to the family uh, parents or to the family structures to actually accept you because that's everything you, they want. So when, when you're talking when you're talking about uh, a world in which these people identify themselves with other social groups, we believe that these ties would be less strong. So, for example, they would have they it would be more easy, for example, not to accept me. For example. When I'm talking about the LGBT community, for example, in your side of the house, you say, okay, LGBTQ uh, individuals should not identify themselves with their families. So on your side of the house, you identify themselves with the LGBTQ plus community. Even in this community, there are, there are a lot of behavior standards in which if you don't uh, fit in, you're not going to be loved and you're not going to be accepted anymore. So for example, if you're an LGBTQ person and you don't identify with your family anymore and you identify with the LGBT community, you're still going to be tied to a lot of uh, standards and behaviors that uh, are going to make you less autonomous in your decisions and they will still in fact uh, affect your decisions anyway. So we believe that on our side of the house, you are still able to grow as an individual and have self-actualizations. I can still go through uh, self-journeys, um, self-actualization journeys on our side of the house, especially because you have your families and you have your families and family structure with you. They will support you with your with all your with all of your all of your decisions. And when you're going through, for example, existential struggles, you're going to have someone there that's not going to abandon you. You know that because that's everything you have and that you are the only person that they have and they feel this biological and, and, and this biological and social bond that's not going to be uh, thrown away because on their side of the house, we have these beha behavior changes that uh, condition these relationships. But second of all, if you don't identify with your family, you need to identify with other things. This looks like work or other social groups. So they will still affect your decisions anyway. It, it, is, it is better uh, with your family because they're, they have more incentives to uh, keep together with you and to support you either way. 
Why haven't we bought here then? We said that families have more incentives to stick together because one, they have more stronger social and biological bonds. They have lived all of their lives together. They have experienced things that nobody else has. For example, I have uh, swapped my, my son's diapers. So I, I have this connection with them that's more strong than that's stronger than any for example friendship that you can have on your side of the house but second of all we have unconditional love and unconditional um uh, affection within those families because the uh, of, of these uh experiences that they've lived together they have incentives for example to uh, accept and support them in any decisions in life because they know that when they're going they're going through these struggles they will be helped um in the future and they will be helped anyway but second of all we, we have said that social groups rely on behavioral parent patterns so so that, that looks like for example the lgbt community uh even though there might be a strong narrative to love yourself and love others you'll still be conditioned to certain behavioral patterns that are going to inflict on your self-autonomy and self-actualization just as opposition tries to to say that this doesn't happen in their scenario but i've already said that this um as well as symmetrical but it actually it's strong on their side of the house because these social groups and these other uh, identities, they are not forced, for example, to have you and to support you through all decisions in life because you're not everything to them. They have all, all other members, they have other friends. So on our side of the house, your, pa your parent do does not have, for example, a million sons or a million opportunities. They have to, to support you and you have uh, to love them for all, your, of, all of your life because you have a better support system. I'm very proud of those. I thank the speaker for that fine speech, and I would like to invite the third opposition speaker. Here, here. I prefer my POIs verbally, and my pronouns are she, her. We think that proposition has completely mischaracterized how relationships outside of family look like on our side of the house. We think that relationships can still be loving and close within different situations, for example, in friendship groups, in school or in the workplace. We don't refute the importance of family regarding a person's growth, but we do believe that the decisions of an individual should not be dependent on family. Proposition kept talking about how they think family is important, and we do agree with it, but we don't understand how we are automatically giving up family relationships on our side of the house by also valuing other relationships, such as friendships, and we don't think that's mutually exclusive. I'm sure everyone here, um, while having a family, also has friends. And we don't think this debate is about whether friendship or familial relationships are stronger, but rather whether people should actively have more social interactions outside of family. So two points of clash within this debate. Firstly, on which side gets better relationships, and secondly, which side is more beneficial towards the individuals themselves. Firstly, moving on to the first clash on who gets better relationships. What Prop told us was that they said that family has more incentives to take care of each other and basically a bunch of random um, advantages of family. And also they said that like people need to have a strong support system for challenges. And our response towards that is that we do not deny the importance of family or how people need a good support system. But what we're saying is that in addition to that, it is important that individuals still interact with other organizations. We don't see how the advantages of family don't exist on our side of the house, but we bring to you exclusively why we gain more benefits when people shift more focus to other social interactions while still maintaining these close relationships with their, fa with their families. And we think that they also completely misunderstood the status quo and told us that um, basically these relationships that exist outside of family is based on dynamic things and that people basically, if they're friends, they don't really care about each other. They like people just don't care about uh, others that are outside of their family and that these relationships are significantly weaker. Our response towards this is that we think it's unlikely that I'll take that later. We think that it's unlikely that relationships outside of family are weak and change dynamically. Because firstly, for friendship groups to occur, we think that it's likely that people actually care about those who they interact with to a certain extent due to human nature. We think that due to the challenges and flaws that individuals have, it is likely that people are sympathetic towards those they interact with daily life, whether or not they are within their family. Um, I'll take it now. This debate is about a trade-off between who you must trust more and spend more time, family or others. Deal with your burden of prioritizing other social groups in detriment of family that have already got closer bonds to you. We don't think this is a trade-off that we necessarily have to make on our side of the house. Rather than that, we think that it is about like shifting focus, but we can equally prioritize two things. The 
the motion is about whether family should be the main thing in life. We're telling you that it can you can have other priorities as well as family. And we're, we don't think that we're completely disregarding family on our side of the house. What we're saying is that we can have other things that occur at the same time. Moving back onto my uh, point on why we think it's unlikely that relationships outside of family are weak and change dynamically. We think that for relationships to occur, it doesn't necessarily mean that your friends have to have like the same interests as you are, like or, or, or to have the same personality as you. For example, we think that there are people who have been friends for decades and despite things changing um, dynamically throughout like this time, these people still are able to remain friends. And we think that this is based on the basis that like they perhaps like encounter challenges together in their lives. And we don't think that by having like sudden changes in interest, this will automatically lead to like relationships dismantling. We never received any analysis from proposition as to why they think relationships depend on dynamic things. And once the relationship, um, once that changes the oh, relationship suddenly dissolves, um, no, thank you. Um, and we think that their whole case basically hinges on whether relationships outside of the family are weak. And if that characterization falls, their whole case falls. And we think that we have proved to you sufficiently why these relationships are not necessarily weak um, outside of family. On the flip side, we tell you on our side of the house, well, with family not being the most dominant unit, we have family being a stronger support system. We have clearly told you in first speaker how we think relationships work better within the family as it is less likely for, uh, for individuals to feel that they're pressured to sacrifice their own freedom in achieving what their family expects them to, to do and instead have more space to explore what they actually want. And we think that this leads to less tensions because of less conflicts between what the individual actually wants and what their family expects, and therefore it's less likely for conflict to occur. What Proposition told us in response is that they think that, um, they tell us that like people will not prioritize their family anymore and that um, they will have less incentive to take care of their family, therefore family relationships will become worse. We Our response towards this is that we think it's very contradictive for a proposition to come up, come up and tell us that because they have told us throughout their whole speech, like um, in both first speaker and second speaker, how that's like they think that people have the incentive to take care of their family, no matter who they are, even if the family has like very strict Christian values, even if they belong to the LGBT community, we still accept you. But then now they tell us that family, like family members, are no longer incentivized to care about each other just because they have other friendships as well, and we think that this we think they need to solve this problem on their side of the house. And even if we take them at their best case and assume that all other interactions outside of family are weak and dynamic and are over like, and are just like completely unloving at all, we still have better relationships on our side of the house as we prove to you why family relations are better on our side with less tensions occurring. Therefore, all, all the benefits they say about family throughout their whole case are even more magnified on our side of the house. And we see that this leads us to winning this clash because firstly okay i'll take your poi this is a debate about prioritization you cannot have both how will this uh the relationships with uh, outside family affect your decisions work better than the relate the relationships within family we i don't really understand your poi we have to told you throughout our whole case that we don't think this is a trade-off that ne we necessarily need to make. We tell you that family and friendship are not mutually exclusive. And you have never really told us why you think that we, if we care about fr friendship, we automatically just have to disregard our whole, whole family at all. We don't see how that happens. Moving back to why we win this clash. Firstly, we prove to you why friendships are not weak. And secondly, we prove to you why we still have family relationships. And we think this is important because their whole case hinges on um, the this part of relationships. And this is their main line of argument. So if we win this clash, we win this debate as a whole. Then moving on to the second point of clash on benefits towards individuals. Proposition said that it's bad that um, individuals socialize because they have to change themselves to be accepted. Our response towards this is we don't think this is necessarily the case for most individuals. We think that for people to actually become friends, they usually accept individuals for who they are. And panel or even fellow, fellow debaters, I think we all have friends that we value. And in those instances, we think I think it's very unlikely that we have to actually change ourselves um, in order to make friends for that to occur. And secondly, even if we assume that some people may have to change themselves to be accepted, we think that this is an overgeneralization of relationships. And, most, and in most cases, people are able to attain loving relationships. But rather on the comparison, we tell you how um, individuals are better off on our society because of how we can see an improvement status of women in the status quo. And they say that it's due to the patriarchal view of family. But we, in response, we tell you that it's because of the emphasis of 
family and the significance it has with one's personal identity, that people are actually expected to dedicate more time to family. And we think that this bias is actually perpetuated on their side of the house. Therefore, we think that um, all what basically what proposition said about like family being able to accept people for who they are. We think that there's no analysis as to why this is going to happen. And we think that this is insufficient to take out all our analysis on why people are li likely to be pressured to contribute to family. Therefore, we think that we're, we win this debate and we are very proud to oppose. I thank the speaker for that fine speech. And if everybody is ready, I would like to invite the opposition reply. Here, here. I'll be starting in three, two, one. This is a regret motion. What we need to do is to look back and see what happened in the past and why that paradigm has changed and why do we want to revert back to the old world. So what are the metrics of judging this debate? First of all, we'll look at what are the, what are the problems and what was the problems and what are the problems. And secondly, we'll look at who creates better benefits for individuals. Under the first question, what was the problem? We told you from first speaker that the reason why family is no longer dominant, the dominant unit of organization in the society is because we don't want to be directly linked to the family. As in like, we don't want to, when we go out, we don't want to be identified as a, a member, as Wong's family per se, whereas I will identify myself as Millie for myself. And I do all the decisions. I will not prioritize my family's, um, I will not prioritize my family's benefits, but rather I would prioritize my own uh, will and uh, engagement and self-actualization in this paradigm. They have never really engaged with, anal and with our analysis of the importance of individualism. Then let's look at uh, their problem. So today it's just in props responsibility to tell us what are the problems in the status quo and why do they want to change it, right? So the whole case on prop is based on the premise that they had better relationships with family in the past before the change of the status quo happened. But the only mechanism that they gave us is that family is not, a dom if the family is not a dominant unit of organization in the society, it means that you will spend less time with your family. Therefore, relationship with your family will deteriorate, right? That's the only sole mechanism they have given us. But first, they have never proven to us why there's a problem with the status quo, other than a one-liner of individuals are lonely, therefore they need intimate relationship with others. Then they force us into um, having this choice between either you can rely on your family or either, or either you could rely on your friends. However, we don't think there's a problem in the status quo uh, at all with the, individual, with the individuality being embraced. And we don't think there's a detachment within the society for the people like uh, in the status quo. We just don't think it's is happening. So since that's the problem that they're trying to solve doesn't even stand, therefore the whole case contingent on this problem also falls, right? We don't see people are being detached from the society. We don't think um, there's enough analysis of why this problem is happening and why do we need to uh, uh, change the current status quo. And we tell that even if we engage with their best case, uh, onto our second point on who creates a most benefits for individuals, we tell that even if we engage their best case and assume that improving relationships with others um, uh, is the most important thing that we need to justify. We tell that this is actually symmetrical on both sides, right? I have analyzed to, I have, uh, analyzed to you how good relationships are also happening in the status quo with family not being the dominant unit of organization. In fact, I've spent like uh, my whole point telling you why, um, uh, why individuals, uh, why, why family and individuals will have a better uh, harmonized uh, family because they understand each other and because family is willing to give individuals space to develop themselves uh, when they're not seeing family as their uh, sole purpose in life. And now we have told you, and, and on top of that, we have, on our side, we have told you a unique benefits that individuals can achieve a better uh, actualization, maturity, et cetera, et cetera. But let's take a step back and assume that symmetrical 
uh, it's a symmetrical, like the benefits that I get is symmetrical given the nuance of characterization of family. Let's say that this family is extremely open and understanding to their kids and our benefits are symmetrical on both sides. So what? This characterization can be happening on our side in the status quo as well. We tell that, but this is props responsibility to prove to us that why status quo is bad and why do we need to revert back to the old paradigm? We don't think they have what done their job. So therefore we win because we don't see a problem with status quo. We prioritize in the Individuality before family, but we still respect the intimate relationship with uh, family members. Um, but on the other hand, we have proven to you uh, the, the uh, benefits to the family, the benefits to individuals, and benefits to uh, women, which they have not even addressed. So therefore, I'm incredibly proud to oppose. Thank you. I thank the speaker for that fine speech, and I would like to invite the last speaker of this round, the proposition reply. Here, here. Okay, I'm gonna start my speech in a few seconds. Just gonna put my timer on. Okay, so I will start my speech in three, two, one. Panel the clarification for this debate reads: Union of organization societies, which means family, is a com combine of people that you identify with that you're likely to spend time with and act together. This means that there is a clear trade-off in this debate that in order to you to have your family as a dominant part of your life, you need to be actually part of their lives. So opposition team has run away from this burden. But now engaging with the actual debate. So this debate is about the trade-off between who you must trust more and spend more time with with so your family in our side of the house or other people. This means that opposition is actually mixing the comparison comparis, comparative in this debate because you're not actually able to have both at the same time. But what, the, what does the world look like? Our counterfactual is the one that we have stronger foundations and relationships due to the fact of being closer to our family. Because time, attention, love is a scarce source in both worlds. The difference is that, but that only in our side of the house, we have actual people who are able to spend these scarce resources with us, our family. What happens in their counterfactual, the one that is the status quo, who has individual individualistic relationships, people who only care about what you can give to them, is the one that when you do not prioritize their family, and because of that, you do not have a strong connection with, it, with them, you do not actually have this scarce resource of love, passion and attention because if they're not able to give what they want to from you you're not uh, you do not deserve their love so engage with the main clashes of this debate so which world has better relationships in our side of the house we have people who love you no matter what but most important they care about who you truly are not depending on what you, you how, not depending on what you can give back to them or what you believe in or what you, or your actions are you have stronger relations because you do not depend on momentary on momentary relationships and fragile relationships in their side of the house in comparisons they have uh, the their fundamental the, fun, the fundamental principle of relationships is how useful you are, you know, what are your interests in your personality. They rely on how you're able to be accepted by people, not be because who you are, but because who they want you to be. So when they say that we have met a more, more controlling world, they are lying because the control world only happens when you have to adapt yourself every time, every day to be accepted by the group of friends who do not care about who you truly are. Your family, no matter what, will actually love you because Family is a strong bond that cannot that that, 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 do, not, that does, do not rely on, on on simple actions like dressing the way you should or talking the way you should or think the way you should to be accepted. So we went to clash of relationships. But about the clashes of which word is better, who you should rely on. Panel look, in our world, we can rely better on families. We believe that there are dominant groups in both sides of the house. The difference is that in our cooperative is better because families, as we already have explained to you, have the best interest for your life. And this only happens in our world because we prioritize there more because you're directly connected with. So this means that when you choose to spend more time with your family, you're likely to be closer to them. They're not able to do this because they choose to live lives with closer connections to, to fragile friends and to people who don't earn not actually inherent to your family. So panel, how should we weigh this debate? You should just answer two, two basic questions. Which world do you prefer? Do you prefer to have a family next to you every time you need, when you do not have money, when you do not have 
someone to, to be there for you? Or do you choose to have your friends that are only there because they think that you can give them back to, that because you think they because they think you can give something back to them. I choose my family that is always there for me. I choose my family that does not that does not care about me spending eight hours a day debating because she, he she knows he knows that I'm 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 I'm, I'm strong enough and I do matter for that. My my life my love does not needs to be addressed because I'm useful. It needs to be addressed because I'm important. My family is the only one that sees me that way. Oh. Okay, I would like to thank everybody for this debate. Um, we are going to go into deliberation now. So the teams, please stay in this room. We will be back in like 15, 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. Uh, does anybody know, like, do I just now stop recording? Will it be sent to org or will it be on my computer? I've never done, like, what, what happens? It's going to be on your computer. My computer. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, so uh, I'll just stop it. If it deletes itself, I'm very sorry. If it does not delete itself, um, fantastic. But like, I'm uh, yeah, no, 